Okay, everybody. So, more about A. So, again, just to remind you, so uh, A uh, was uh, uh, chord diagrams uh, modulo uh, the four term relation, and it's a graded space. And it's not a waste of time to study it, it's completely combinatoric, but it's not a waste of time, right? Because it is sort of like the space of knots in the sense that in some double duality sense and more precisely there is well we haven't quite talked about it but about how to prove the fundamental theorem but the fundamental theorem will end up being proven we have not yet proven it right will end up being being proven by finding an invariant z going from here to here uh, and so this is the target space of a very rich invariant okay Anyway, we nearly proved the following theorem last time. So the theorem said that A, along with the multiplications that we mentioned, with the co-multiplications that we mentioned, and two objects that I said were minor, namely the unit and the co-unit, uh, makes a connected, graded, commutative, co-commutative bialgebra, and I believe I've defined all of these things. Uh, and maybe an additional property is that the dimension of AM for every fixed M is less than infinity. AM, it's A itself is infinite dimensional, but at every given degree, it's, it's a finite uh, uh, dimension. So uh, the only thing missing, well, okay, the big thing missing is what is it good for, uh, but the... Uh, a uh, small thing missing is um, uh, the two remaining objects, the unit and the co-unit. Okay? So, uh, let me just uh, say what they are. So, a unit, sorry, I don't know why I wrote co-unit. So, a unit is something that you have in an algebra. If you have an algebra, then a unit is an element 1 inside the algebra such that uh, 1 times a is equal to a times 1 is equal to a for every a uh, inside the algebra. But I don't want to write it this way, just like I wanted to write m as a map and so that I would be able to write commutative diagrams and then dualize them. I want to write having a unit as a map, okay? So alternatively, a unit is a map, eta, from the ground field. From now on, let me uh, think of the ground field as if it is the rational numbers. I could work with, with other ground fields as well. Uh, into the... Sorry, uh, 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 technical malfunction. Uh, sorry. Oh, good, it came back. Sorry, uh, uh, that's the problem with gadgets. Sometimes they don't work. So, it's a map eta from the ground field into the algebra. Uh, which, uh, you know, you should think of it, so in your mind, you should think of it as the map which maps uh, a coefficient alpha into alpha times 1, okay? And uh, it has the property that uh, a unit uh, has. So, let me write this property as a diagram. Uh, yes, Leonard? So, the, the camera is tilted, so the, the board is kind of some... Oh, 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 I sorry, I forgot to switch to the other camera. Uh, it's not that the camera is tilted, it's that it's the wrong camera. Sorry about that. Okay, but I am sharing the screen, so you could still see it on... Okay, so the property 
is the following. Um, if you have uh, an element uh, uh, okay, you, you can go from uh, Q tensor A uh, into A in two different ways. One way is, well, if you tensor with the ground field, they're isomorphic, so these two are the same. So, there's clearly a map from Q tensor A. This is the map that does nothing. Alternatively, you could apply the unit tensor the identity. So now you are in, so this is the identity map, so now you are in A tensor A, and then you could, ap could apply the multiplication. Okay? So uh, think about it uh, like this. So if you had here uh, elements alpha tensor A, an element alpha tensor A, then the map, the, the isomorphism would map it to alpha A here, and the, 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 the unit tensor the identity would map it to alpha 1 tensor A here, and then the multiplication map will map it into alpha 1 times A, but 1 is the identity, so these two are equal. So, the property that the unit should satisfy is that this diagram commutes, and if the algebra is commutative, that's enough. If it's not commutative, but and ours are commutative, so I'll ignore the, 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 the other case, but if the algebra is just associative and not, commute, not necessarily commutative, there is also a symmetric map where you uh, replace the, swap the role of A and Q. Just, just swap it over, okay? So anyway, that's what it means to be a unit. Uh, now, what does it mean to be, okay, so uh, there is also the dual notion, so a co-unit is sort of everything reversed. So it's a map epsilon from the algebra into uh, the ground field, such that the opposite diagram is commutative. So the opposite diagram is the following. If you have, uh, you, there are two ways to go from A to uh, Q tensor A. One way is, well, A and Q tensor A are isomorphic, like before. The other way is you first apply the co-product, so this is, I should have said, this is a co-unit in a co-algebra. Okay? So you first apply the co-product, and then you are in A tensor A, and then you get from A tensor A to Q tensor A by applying epsilon tensor uh, the identity. And again, uh, if the co-algebra is co-commutative, then uh, that's the only axiom. I mean, the, the axiom is that this diagram commutes. And if the algebra is uh, not necessarily co-commutative, you also have the, the uh, axiom in which you flip the order of Q and A. Okay? So, the claim that I didn't quite completely say is that uh, our space of core diagrams has a unit and a co-unit as well. So, uh, uh, but it's actually nearly trivial. I mean, most of the time I, uh, is defining the notion. Actually, pro proving it is trivial. So, in our A, uh, the map eta from the ground field into uh, A is the map which maps a constant alpha, a coefficient alpha, to alpha times the unit diagram, 
One is the unit diagram. It's the diagram that if you multiply it into every, any other diagram, it do, the other diagram doesn't change. But that's clearly the empty diagram. So this is not zero. This is the empty diagram. That's a circle, not zero. Okay? Circle, not uh, zero. Okay? And the map epsilon, so, uh, well, you know, if you want to think where epsilon comes from, then uh, you have to think, so we have to, uh, so, so a co-unit should correspond to the unit of the dual. So we should be thinking which not invariant when you multiply it with all other not invariants, does not change them. The answer is, it's the not invariant which, is, which has the constant value 1. So now, what is the weight system of the not, uh, the not, who's, uh, uh, the not invariant who's con who's inva whose constant value is 1? So this is, a, well, it will be a degree 0 no, uh, invariant, right? The constant is a degree zero invariant, and uh, it has, uh, and, and therefore its weight system will be a functional on core diagram with zero chords, and there is only one core diagram on zero chords, it's the empty circle, and it should be the functional that maps this diagram to one. So, epsilon is defined by um, uh, epsilon of uh, a diagram D is equal to 1, sorry, uh, not I, uh, 1 uh, if D is equal to a circle, again, this is a circle, not the number 0, and uh, zero if d is anything else, and maybe I'll uh, make it clearer by writing if the degree of d is greater than uh, one. Okay? So, after having said all of this, uh, the, the, the theorem is actually trivial. So, after making the definition, you just have to verify the properties and it's completely trivial. Uh, but still it was important to say it, because uh, then comes another theorem that I will not prove, uh, but that's a classical theorem. So this is the Milnor-Moore uh, uh, theorem, and it's from, I'm forgetting when, but from the 60s. And uh, I'll do a reduced version, so this is the co-commutative uh, version, and there is another, there is a more general version as well, which, uh, which I will not discuss, okay? But anyway, it's a, or maybe I will discuss, but not now. Uh, but anyway, this theorem says that uh, uh, if uh, A is uh, a handful of words, so exactly all the words that we said before. So, should I repeat it? So, uh, con graded, connected, commutative, co-commutative, associative, co-associative, and has, a, and, and all the dimensions are finite. So if A is essentially as above, uh, then uh, A is a graded uh, polynomial uh, algebra. And I think I want to be a little bit more precise about this. But first, I want to uh, to tell you about a little bit about graded polynomial algebras. So you know, you all know polynomials, right? So uh, 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 so if you have a 
a polynom a, a, a list of variables let's call them uh, p1 p2 p3 and so on and in fact it may even be infinitely many okay you can look at the polynomials in all of these variables to make it a graded polynomial algebra I will insist that each variable pi also has a degree and the degree of all of these pi's are greater than or equal to 1 so uh, you know so for example you could be talking about the ring of polynomials in two variables x y but then if you decree that the degree of x is equal to 1 and the degree of y is equal to 2 then uh, you will be counting degrees in a different way so the degree of x y squared will be 1 plus 2 times 2 so 1 plus 4 so it will be 5 so it makes sense to to talk about graded polynomial algebras okay and um, a graded polynomial algebra or in fact every polynomial algebra is in fact a bi-algebra as well so I need to tell you uh, how to compute the coproduct of an element right the product you all know but I need to tell you how to compute the, the coproduct as well so we decree that the coproduct of pi of every element pi is 1 tensor pi plus pi tensor 1 and then if you have a more complicated element uh, the coproduct is, def is, 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 um, is forced on you so for example uh, if you want to know what is the coproduct of x y squared so one property of the coproduct was that it was um, uh, uh, compatible with the product so the coproduct is a um, well it's compatible with the product and the compatibility simply means that this is the coproduct of x times uh, the coproduct of y uh, quantity squared and this is x tensor 1 plus 1 tensor x times um, y tensor 1 plus 1 tensor y squared and now if you have the energy you can open the parentheses and, and write it explicitly so the only reason I'm mentioning it is to mention that setting this rule is enough I mean from this you know all the other properties uh, there is also a, a, a unit so the unit as you can imagine maps, uh, maps every scalar to that scalar times 1 in the polynomial ring and there is also a co-unit epsilon and again I'm not defining them but the, the co-unit will simply map every polynomial to the constant term so the, to the term of degree 0 in it okay and uh, the claim is that um, our algebra is of that type namely you can find a list of generators uh, with the further properties that only finitely many of them have a uh, degree less than n for any n so there might be infinitely there will be infinitely many generators but only finitely many in each degree uh, such that uh, our a is that and in fact I can make it even a bit more refined okay so in fact um, this construction of the polynomial ring can be slightly generalized or in fact it's, it's barely generalized so namely uh, there is the following construction so if uh, V is uh, I hope I'm not con no let's call it P sorry 
v is what we called it before, let's call it p. So if p, uppercase p, is a graded uh, vector space, you can form the symmetric algebra of p. So what is the symmetric algebra of p? The symmetric algebra of p is, uh, well, the so-called tensor algebra of p. So it's the, uh, but rather than defining it, let, but rather than defining it formally, let me just tell you uh, what it is. So it's just the space generated by, well, it's actually the sum of all tensor powers of p. But the sum of all tensor, what it really means is that an element is something of the form uh, p1 tensor, p2 tensor, up to p, up to tensor pn, uh, where all of the pi's are in p. These pi's are not the same as the pi's from here. Okay? And uh, modulo the relation, so this is the tensor algebra, modulo the relation that uh, you force it to be symmetric. So uh, modulo the relation that P1 tensor up to Pn is equal to P sigma 1 up to tensor up to uh, P sigma n for every permutation uh, of n elements. Okay? So, this is an algebra by concatenation. So, if you have two products of P's, two, ten, two long tensor products of P's, you can concatenate them. Uh, it's a co-algebra by the rule that decrees that uh, the same rule as before, so uh, if uh, lower case, case P belongs to upper case P, you decree uh, that uh, the coproduct of lower case P is P tensor 1 plus 1 tensor P, and if uppercase P is the vector space freely generator, generated, so it's the vector space generated by the uh, generators of a polynomial ring, then the symmetric algebra on that vector space is the polynomial ring. Okay? So, uh, uh, if you... Uh, l l l let me write it as a formula. So, the symmetric algebra of the vector space generated by some least P1 up to Pn and maybe even continued of generators uh, is equal to the polynomial ring uh, on these generators. Having said this, so I can continue the, the statement of the Milner-Moore theorem. So Milner-Moore will say that A is isomorphic as a bi-algebra, so as a bi-algebra, meaning both in terms of the product and the coproduct, to the symmetric algebra generated by the primitives of uh, A. Now, what are the primitives of A? These are the generators. These are like the generators of the polynomial algebra. So, the primitives of A are the collection of all P inside A such that uh, the coproduct applied to P is equal to P tensor 1 plus 1 tensor P. Uh, so, uh, why do I care? Maybe I said too much, because 
because I really, uh, I really wanted to say something else today. Uh, but anyway, why do I care? Uh, it means that when you compute uh, like I did, oops, sorry, what happened here? Sorry, um, I've upgraded the software and since then it's mis misbehaving. So, uh, when you compute the dimension of AM and you get 1, 1, 2, 3, 6, 10, 19, 13, 60 and so on, you could instead compute the dimensions of the spaces of primitives and they are much smaller. These are the number of generators there are in each degree. So they are 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, 12, and so on. Okay? Uh, and, uh, you know, if, if, if you want to see what it means, it will really mean that there are... So, you know, uh, let's uh, look at... Uh, uh, let's, let, 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 let's try to interpret uh, this 6 and this 2 here. Okay? So the 6 and the 2 here means, the 6 means that there are 6 finite type invariants of degree 4. The 2 means that only 2 of them are primitive, only 2 of them are new, and all the other ones are actually products of, the, of, of, of invariants that come from lower degrees. Right? If you want to compute the, the if, if, if you want to figure out uh, the dimension of a polynomial algebra in degree n, then there are the primitives, the generators in degree n, and the ones that are products of things of lower degree. So, uh, in degree 4 there will be 6 invariants, but only 2 of them are new, and the, the remaining 4 will be uh, the, the, the one of degree 4, 1 to the 4th, so, uh, you know, let me write it schematically. So, uh, if you want to know what these 6 are, then there is the degree 1, 1 raised to the power 4, multiplied by itself 4 times. There will be the uh, degree 1, 1, multiplied by itself twice, times the degree 2. There will be the, the degree 2, 1 times the degree 2, 1. And then there will be the degree uh, 3, 1 times the degree 1, 1. And there should be another one. Oh no, these are 4 plus the 2 primitives 1 gives us the 6. Okay? Good. Uh, now, uh, uh, so, yeah. So is a so you define a primitive as something, um, or a, as an element which behaves a certain way under the co-multiplication. Yes. Um, is it possible to reword this as like the set of irreducible elements, or the set of elements that cannot be written as a product of two non-invertible elements, or are those like slightly different notions? Uh, so, um, there are slightly different notions. So, uh, uh, um, so, okay, so, 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 so consider, for example, the algebra uh, we talked about before, Q of X and Y, where uh, the degree of X is equal to 1, and the degree of y is equal to 2. And let's look at the degree 2 elements of this algebra. Okay? So, they include, you know what, uh, uh, okay, they include uh, y plus 0 0.01 times uh, x squared. Okay? This one is not primitive, but it also, sorry, but this one cannot be written as a, but, but it's irreducible, right? It cannot be written as a product, okay? 
the primitives will be only um, uh, x and y, but there are many other things that cannot be written as a product. Okay? Okay. Um, okay. Is there a way to characterize the primitives in terms of call, di the call diagrams of the primitives? Yes, and that will be the next topic. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, or it will be embedded inside the next topic. Okay? So, uh, uh, the next thing I wanted to say is... Um, uh, so, okay. So, A, the algebra of core diagrams, uh, is therefore... Uh, well, it's, it's worth your while that I'll give you a list of primitives, okay? So, there, in degree one, there is only one primitive, and it's the core diagram with one chord, and it's, well, also sometimes known as the tetagraph, okay? Uh, in degree two, uh, there is also only one primitive, and it's the... Uh, difference between this diagram and that diagram. And beyond that, I haven't memorized. But the reason I wanted to mention it is to say that A reduced, uh, right, A reduced was really A modded out by the ideal generated by uh, this diagram, right? Because I need to mod out by the framing independence relation, and the framing independence relation means, you know, if you have a core diagram with an isolated chord, you set it to zero, but a core diagram with an isolated chord is a multiple of theta, okay? But this means that um, uh, there are natural maps uh, from A to A reduced. That's obvious. That's just the projection. Okay? But there is also a natural map going from A reduced to A. This is less obvious. This is the fact that if you have a polynomial ring, well, I mean, modding out by one of the generators, simply gives you a polynomial ring with one generator less. And if you have a polynomial ring with one generator less, so, in other words, A reduced is the... Uh, so, really, what I'm telling you here is that A reduced is the uh, polynomial ring generated by uh, the generators of the... Sorry, the generators of the... Uh, of A with one generator removed. So, uh, so there is clearly a map from A reduced to A. You simply, if you have a polynomial, uh, well, I mean, polynomial rings if in fewer ma variables always map into polynomial rings in more variables. Okay? And uh, we will... This is actually a, a, not a trivial map, and I think it will be the content of homework six, maybe. So you'll, you'll see it again. Okay. So, uh, that's the end of this topic. It took me longer than I expected, and I want to talk about something else now. Okay? Uh, so, uh, well, so, I want to tell you that um, A is also dual in some sense. So, we already know that it's dual to knots. I want to tell you that it's also dual in some sense to Lie algebras and representations. Okay? So, there is a pairing which maps A uh, tensored, and this is completely informal, so Lie algebras and representations into 
the ground field. Okay? So this is completely informal. The way I wrote it, it's complete nonsense, but I'll make it uh, formal a little bit later. Or now. Okay? And, uh, and that's why for every Lie algebra and every representation there is a not invariant, because the moment you have such a pairing, it means that whenever you have a Lie algebra and a representation, you have a functional on A, and a functional on A is a functional on knots. Okay? So, uh, so, so, so it's a valuable piece of information. But first, I have to uh, prove a theorem which, uh, uh, which, uh, which tells you somehow that A looks like a Lie algebra. Okay? And, uh, I'll, 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 I, and, and, and so, so let me state the theorem and, uh, and, and, and then explain why, why it says what I just, why it means what I just said. Okay? So the theorem says that the following. The theorem says that A is isomorphic to a different space, which I will call A up T. And T stands for trivalent. So T stands for trivalent, uh, but also for temporary. Because the moment I will prove that the two spaces are isomorphic, I will no, no longer distinguish between them, and then I'll drop the T. And uh, what is AT? So I suppose I have to define it. So AT is likewise, like A, it's a space of diagrams, but it's a different space of diagrams. So the diagrams in AT, oh sorry, I ran out of paper. Uh, So the diagram in a, the diagrams in AT, like the diagrams in A, have um, a skeleton which is a circle, and then they might have a number of chords. But in addition to the chords, they may have trivalent vertices. So. There might be more, I mean, ba basically there are trivalent graphs. There might be compl a complicated structure of trivalent vertices. Uh, I don't know, there could be another piece here like this. Okay? Uh, but I have to tell you a little bit, with a little bit more information. So, first of all, uh, this point here, you see this is a quadrivalent vertex. That's not a vertex. Right? It's just because I projected the diagram to the plane, it looked like a vertex, but it's not a vertex. Vertices are only trivalent. Second, so in a trivalent vertex, there are always three uh, edges coming out. Okay? I mean, in this case, uh, the three edges are, two of them are the same but there are still three edges coming out near each vertex. I want you to specify a cyclic order, ordering of these vertices in each, sorry, of these edges in each vertex. So, uh, at each vertex you specify either this cyclic ordering or the opposite cyclic ordering. Okay? So this is a bit of, inf of further information, and this information is, is called, uh, so the vertices are oriented. Okay? Now, uh, my convention is to draw these diagrams in the plane. I mean, these diagrams are a priori not planar. There is nothing planar about them, but, you know, I draw them in the plane, and my convention will be to draw them in the plane such that the vertices are always oriented counterclockwise unless otherwise specified. Okay? So this vertex was not specified, so the orientation is counterclockwise. Okay? 
And there is one fur sorry, there are two further things. Uh, one is um, uh, the, the diagram must be connected. So uh, I should have said it. So it should be connected. And the one last property that I want to say is this is a graded space and I need to tell you how to compute the degree. So the degree of a diagram is half uh, the total number of vertices. Half the total number of uh, vertices. So for example, this diagram has, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine degrees on vertices on the circle and another one, two, three, four, five vertices inside. Nine plus five is 14 divided by two. So uh, this diagram is of degree seven. Okay, so now I told you what are the diagrams. And I still have to tell you what are the relations. The relations are also new. So there are three relations. The first relation is the anti-symmetry relation, which says that an internal vertex is anti-symmetric. So if you flip the orientation of an internal vertex, uh, you flip a sign. So, uh, let me write it using my conventions. So basically, if you have an internal vertex and you replace it by the vertex, vertex with opposite orientation, but my convention is that when I draw vertices in the plane, they're always oriented counterclockwise. So to draw the one with the opposite orientation, I just uh, draw it this way. Okay, so this plus this is equal to zero. Then there is the STU relation. So the STU relation says that uh, if you have uh, the following picture. So if you have, uh, uh, oh sorry, I should have said that the circle is oriented. So if you have uh, three uh, diagrams uh, like this. So one is, has an internal vertex which is leaning on the circle outside. Okay? Then you can uh, replace it by this minus that. Notice that those three diagrams have the same degree. Okay? Because all of them have two vertices. And then the last relation is the so-called IHX relation. So the IHX relation um, uh, looks like the letter I is equal to the letter H. So this is all happening inside the diagram. Minus, sorry, not, uh, yeah, so minus the letter X, but the letter X doesn't have a vertex, so I actually insert another edge here, uh, so now it has two vertices. Okay? So, um, maybe before proving this theorem, do people here know what Lie algebras are? Okay. Uh, so, you know what, let me do a brief aside on Lie algebras. So, uh, a Lie algebra, you know what, I'll make it a, a, an even fancier aside later on, but for now it will be brief. So, what's a Lie algebra? Uh, a Lie algebra is a vector space L along with a bracket, so a, a map from L a map, a map called the bracket from L tensor L into L. And you should be thinking of it, so the simplest example is 
uh, if you're talking about matrices, and then A bracket B is AB minus BA. And the bracket has two properties. So it must have two properties. So first of all, the bracket of is anti-symmetric. So the bracket of A and B is equal to the negative of the bracket of B and A. And the second property is that the bracket should have should satisfy the so-called Jacobi identity. So A bracket B bracket C is equal to, sorry, not equal to, uh, plus, plus uh, the three cyclic permutations. So B bracket C bracket A plus C bracket uh, A bracket B uh, so this funny combination is equal to zero, and this is the so-called Jacobi uh, identity. And this is just called uh, anti-symmetry. Anyway, I claim, and, and I'll end with that, that the theorem before, so uh, A trans, A, A up T, screams out, I'm a Lie algebra, or I'm related to Lie algebras. So why? So I will interpret an internal vertex. So the dictionary is so uh, the dictionary between these two things is that an internal sorry uh, an internal vertex corresponds to a bracket and um, uh, and walking along the blue line corresponds to mul matrix multiplication. So walking along the blue line corresponds to uh, matrix uh, multiplication. Uh, and now, uh, this relation becomes the bracket is anti-symmetric. This relation becomes the bracket corresponds to multiplying A by B and then B by A. So, uh, put a little uh, A here and B here. And... The first, this relation becomes the bracket of AB is equal to A times B times B times A. Sorry, minus B times A. And finally, if you read this relation carefully, well, this is a relation which says that something that involves two brackets written in three different ways adds to zero. And this is exactly the, the Jacobi identity. Okay? So... This was totally informal. I'm uh, sorry. The definition of A transpose is formal. The definition of a Lie algebra is formal. The relationship between them is totally informal, and hence I will have to do it later. Uh, but the point is, but, 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 but what I wanted to say is that, um, well, I wanted to motivate. So next time, we will have to prove the theorem and turn this kind of very, very schematic relationship into something formal. And we actually have an extra minute, but I, there's nothing natural to say in that win minute, so I'll stop. I mean, we haven't run out of things to say, it's just, yeah. Could you um, explain what, the, what you, a connected diagram means again? Just connected means no, okay, so what's connect, so, okay. Maybe I'll explain what's not connected. So, you see, the moment I have allowed internal, uh, sorry, green vertices, uh, a diagram could have uh, a connected component that doesn't touch anything else. Right? Here is a diagram which is a trivalent graph. Okay? But one component does not touch anything else. So connected just means 
you can walk along the edges from anywhere to anywhere else. Uh, so, uh, so, sorry, sorry. Yeah? Yeah, I was saying the way we just started interpreting chord diagrams is coming naturally from singular knots. Yeah. What do trivalent diagrams naturally come out of? Ooh, that's a terrific question. The answer is that, um, uh, well, okay, for us it will be a formal, it, a formal construction, namely, right. you know, I will prove this theorem and then you cannot argue with me because the moment it's, I prove it, it's true, okay? Right. Uh, but, uh, so, uh, the, the real answer to your question, the better answer to your question is that um, um, knots live in space and finite type invariants are about modifying knots. Okay, so, you know, you take a knot and you make small modifications in a neighborhood of a point. Okay? Yeah. And, and, and these are sort of the chords. The chords really correspond to places on the, on, on the knot where you've done modification. If you are looking at trivalent vertices, then they correspond to modifications you make to space itself. So to make sense of it, you have to extend the theory to a theory of knots inside three manifolds. Instead of inside R3, you make it knots inside three manifolds. And then uh, inside the three manifold, you can make various little mo minor inside modification Modifications which, you know, will do not correspond to flipping crossings, they're different, but they're in spirit like flipping crossings, they're called surgeries, and I'm imprecise because it's roughly surgeries. And then the internal vertices correspond to making modifications to the manifold. Okay? I, uh, I doubt we will end up talking about it. There is a lot to say but I doubt we will get there because I want to flow in different directions. So for us it will remain a formality. But a very easy one, by the way. I mean, I, state, I said a lot about it, but at the end it's actually very easy. Okay. To perform surgery you need a full knot, right? So you're, this is some local version of this? Sorry, say it again? Uh, for to perform surgery, you need to drill along the whole knot, right? So is there some local version of this that's happening in the analogy here? Uh, uh, not really. I mean, I have to tell you what are the knots. So, so a vertex like this corresponds to doing a surgery on a knot that you're going to draw along uh, these edges and vertices. Ah, okay, so the, the, so the vertex describes a knot along which you have to perform surgery. Yes. Right, right, okay. Um, if you want to le learn more about it, uh, so Google claspers and Habiro. Okay, great. So Habiro is the uh, person who did it, and the uh, work is about claspers. Okay. Uh, other questions? Okay. So let's quit and see you on Monday.